Absolutely. So one of the things I want to talk about uh, today is just like the comparison between the legacy financial infrastructure and then what you're building with Fireblocks and kind of digital asset infrastructure. Uh, some of it is similar and, and there's a lot of comparisons and then some of it is very, very different. Um, and obviously you and I believe that some of those differences are advantageous uh, compared to the legacy system. So maybe what we could start with is just the similarities, right? So when you look at the legacy system and the digital asset system, specifically uh, what you're building with Fireblocks, what are the similarities between those two systems? Yeah, so I think that to a certain extent, there will be similarities in terms of the participants in the market, right? I think that... Um, Many years ago, people would say, you know, a few years ago, the, maybe there was like a notion that uh, crypto is going to disintermediate everything. I think that we realize more and more that uh, the players that own uh, the end user are probably going to stay, right? So you will have um, neo banks and banks and payment providers that will still basically hold the end uh, customer relationship and they would you know, basically provide some kind of wallet services or account services. I think that this is pretty much, uh, you know, I, I don't think that eventually it will be that, or for the next, for the foreseeable future, I don't think that um, the entire world population will work with ledger nanos in their pocket, you know, unfortunately, I guess. Um, so I think that that part of the market infrastructure will, 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 will survive. And then um, you will also have uh, the market makers that need to basically supply liquidity to, you know, to interact with the different protocols. So I think that so the perimeter of the of the environment is is uh, going to be pretty much uh, the same. Um, what's definitely going, or I hope, like you know, that what, what's going to basically be changed is I think two things. Uh, one is the counterparty risk and the transparency that people have into actually what's going on behind the scenes. And, and the second aspect is sort of um, some level of disintermediation or, you know, flattening of the pyramid of, of trust that exists, you know, inside of the ecosystem when it comes to just having, you know, today there are just too many layers that, um, you know, eventually constitute a lot of eventually a lot of risk, right? A lot of dependencies that on normal days, they work fine, you know, but on a bad day when the market is stretched, uh, they break, right? And when they break, there is sort of this ripple effect that goes through the market. And eventually, by the way, um, it propagates to the end user or to the end customer. Absolutely. And let's talk a little bit about the uh, the big differences, right? So obviously, uh, similarities are uh, are uh, clear and do a great job articulating those. What are the major differences and why do you feel like the digital assets uh, and Fireblock system is superior or advantageous compared to uh, uh, kind of legacy system? Yeah, so I think that there are basically two, um, you know, the, the base layer, I think there are two components that should be significantly re rethought, right? The first one is what is really the concept of custody? Right of or account management in in some ways, and the second concept is basically, um, you know, around the settlement or the clearing layer. Or basically, how do you connect or how do you move the assets between uh, uh, in, in the marketplace? Um, you know, so so for the first part, um, you know, we were very, I guess. We, you know, we, we developed probably, or we progressed a lot, the utilization of um, this idea of using MPC, basically multi-party computation for, for wallet protection. But beyond the math that goes, beyond, uh, goes around and beyond the security, actually one of the most, the advantages uh, aspects of MPC is that you sort of remove the counterparty risk and, and a single point of failure and uh, the... Um, trust that you actually need to, to put in the party that is servicing you. So that party can still be your, you know, backend, they can still enforce some of the policies, but at the end of the day, from a sort of like, you know, a final operation risk. So for example, our customers, if Fireblocks goes down and disappears tomorrow morning, their crypto is safe. There is a way for them to recover it, right? Whereas if you look at, uh, at other custodial models, uh, that is actually not the case. And that also like, you know, forces us to basically operate in a very different way, right? So all the accounts are segregated, right? We don't commingle things. Uh, and and uh, at the end of the day, 
what people see in our UI is also what people see in their address on the blockchain, right? And those things are actually fundamentally different from the way that the traditional uh, system works where you will have, uh, you know, an, an account in a bank is just like a, a top ledger that represents something that you actually don't have any idea what's going on behind it, right? It can be full reserve, it can be partial reserve, it can be like, you know, 10% reserve, it can be, you know, invested in a lot of different things, but eventually you don't have any idea what it actually represents beyond, you know, what you see in the UI. So that's, I, that's I think, like, you know, component number one. Uh, I hope it makes sense. 